Of the top 15 Democratic presidential hopefuls, only two have not released a climate plan just yet. Vice President Joe Biden released his back in June. He hopes to decrease greenhouse emissions to zero by the year 2050. It's a $1.7 trillion proposal. Candidate Biden also pledged not to take money from fossil fuel corporations, but when asked by a young member of the Sunrise Movement what she could expect from him if he were president on the issue of climate change, especially since he had accepted help from the fossil fuel industry, it got a little bit heated. Turning us now to talk about Biden's change of heart is Claire Teixeira Morrison. She's an organizer for the Sunrise Movement. Welcome, Claire. Great to have you. Hi. Thank you for having me. Um, tell us a little bit about that moment, both uh, who Lily is, what she asked, and your reaction to Biden's response. Yeah, Lily is an organizer with the Sunrise Movement as well. Um, I, yeah, seeing that video, I'm thinking about how I grew up in California, and right now, all across the state, there are wildfires breaking out. Overnight, wildfires are springing up. Families are fleeing for their lives, and they don't know if they'll ever be able to return home. The power is shut off in addition to that, so people can't recover, and they don't know when it's going to end. Yeah. We need a candidate who is going to stand up for us and who understands the severity of the climate crisis. Seeing Biden talk to Lily that way with such complete condescension yeah. at, when she's just terrified about the state of her future breaks my heart. Well, it's just, it's, it's crazy because the thing is, he goes, look at my record. And, mm -hmm. and she, I loved her response. She's like, I did <laughs> the Iraq war and yeah, like all this other. It was a Iraq phenomenal war. response. It's another funny thing, Claire. I've actually pointed this out on the show. Biden, in a 2018 interview, actually said that he's the one who gave the idea to Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren not to take uh, money from super PACs. He broadly mm -hmm. really wants to cast himself as a champion of a lot of these progressive causes um, throughout his throughout his time in the U.S. Senate and, and as vice president. I mean, as somebody who is an organizer in the progressive movement, what, what, what's your response to that? Yeah. yeah. Um, Biden's record is mixed. Mm -hmm. um, but in the Obama-Biden administration, they had an all of all of the above energy policy, which allowed for continued fracking mm -hmm. um, and fossil fuel use when we know that we need to be moving rapidly away from a fossil fuel economy if we want any chance at a livable future. He also, also has hired Heather Zeichel, who um, yeah, has gotten a million dollars from being uh, from fossil fuel companies. So that shows that he's not, he's not at the level of understanding that he needs to be a champion for our generation. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the question that Lily asked is an incredibly important one, mm -hmm. because politicians can say whatever they want when they're running for office, right? Much more important, and this is something we talk about here, to look at where the money is coming from. Whose calls are they going to answer mm -hmm. when they're in office? Exactly. Who are they actually going to fight for when they get there? And in that one clip, you see the combination is, as you put it, and I think rightly so, condescension towards a young activist who is out there asking real and tough questions of, yeah. you know, potential leaders versus, you know, a, a guy who has said, he said about Bernie potentially taking super PAC money, he said, yeah, you wouldn't be able to trust someone who's taking that money. Now he's taking that money. How do we trust him? I mean, that's the bottom line here. Yeah, exactly. We are in this situation because fossil fuel CEOs and lobbyists have been buying out politicians for decades. We know that that's their game. And if politicians aren't taking strong stances and just shutting down the possibility of that happening, we can't trust that they are going to to stand up and fight for us when when like the Higher mm. tire hits the road. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So, Claire, tell me who, which of the candidates, in your view, do do, do have good climate plans? A, a lot of them have come out with great climate plans, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, Sunrise hasn't endorsed any one sure. candidate yet. We know that we need to push all of them to mm -hmm. center the Green New Deal in everything that they do, because that's how we're going to get good jobs for people across this country and have any chance of ending the climate crisis and establishing equity in this world. Um, yeah, but right now, Bernie and Warren are the, have put out the strongest plans we've seen so far.
And what are the what is the strategy of Sunrise Movement? I mean, do you have activists at a lot of the candidates' events asking these types of tough questions? What are you all doing out there on the trail? Yeah, absolutely. We have young people in Sunrise are asking all the candidates these hard questions, trying to see who is taking their future seriously. Um, and we also are working directly on on some like elections and fighting for candidates who support the Green New Deal and who we've endorsed in local elections across the country. And we're going to keep doing both of those things and pressuring politicians showing up at people's offices um, and continuing to put, put the pressure on people who aren't taking the stances that we need to see. Mm -hmm. It's a very revealing moment. And for a guy especially who's been completely sort of cordoned off by his team right. from having to face any kind of real-time voter questions, et cetera. It was quite interesting to see um, to see how he responded in that yeah, moment. Absolutely. Claire, thank you so much. Thank Great you, to Claire. have you. Yeah, Appreciate it. You. Next on Rising, the Flint water crisis put a spotlight on water contamination issues in the United States, but one author says Flint is actually the tip of the iceberg. He joins us to talk about his new book and tell us how the world should be looking at the Middle East for answers coming up on Rising.